and know you are saved. I say, and know you are saved. And I tell you from time to time, when I first got saved, and even after I had been filled with the Holy Spirit, there were days when I didn't feel like I was saved. It's not because of anything that I was doing or saying, but there are days when you're young in Christ, you just don't feel like it. You know, you you get used to the excitement of being in church and the praise and the song and the choir singing and the preacher hollering and say yeah. And, 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 but when you're away from that, uh, as a newborn babe in Christ, I didn't always feel like I was saved. But I knew there had been a change in my life. But I could not feel the change on a daily basis. But after walking with the Lord over years and years, amen, the song said, I know I've been changed. And there comes a time in life when I don't have to feel his spirit, I still know that he is with me. I don't have to feel a hug from the Lord to know that I am saved. I know. And I want to encourage you if I'm talking about you today because I'm talking about somebody to be encouraged. The longer you walk with God, the closer he gets to you and, and you become synchronized in mind, body, and spirit. And you will know without a shadow of a doubt that you are the Lord's. Because you're having problems and you're struggling right now, uh, with your attitude and disposition and how you look at things that does not mean that you are not saved it does not mean that you're not a child of God it just means you got to grow up you just got to grow up and in any family any immediate family there are some kids that's very smart and very quick and then there are some in that same family you know kind of slow but they still got the same mama and dad. Let me see who's the slow one in my family. Let me see in my immediate family. They ain't gonna call no name because they looking at me right now. <laughs> but in every family, there are some A students and there are some C students. Amen. And there are some that needs a little help. And there are some that may have to be put in a class all by themselves to help them catch up that's where it is in the body of Christ some of you need more help than the others but my problem is that those that need more help won't accept the help and you can't convince them they need help look at somebody and say I know I need some help I'm talking about me I know I'm not so proud to the fact that I can say I don't need no help that brings us to our lesson as we talk about the body of Christ. We're talking out of uh, 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter. So uh, hopefully you have your Bibles with me or you got your cell phone uh, with us. And we're going to read uh, 12 and 12 and we're going to read 12, 18. And, amen. MIT, read for me those scriptures that I asked you to read out of 1 Corinthians 12. Read them kind of slow for me. 1 Corinthians 12 and 12 For as the body is one and hath many members all the members of that one body being many are one body so also is Christ verse 18 but now hath God set the members in the body every one of them as it pleased him 1 Corinthians 12 25 that there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care one for another. And whether one member suffer, all the members suffer with it. Or one member be honored, all the members rejoice with it. Now ye are the body of Christ and members in particular. Let's tell the Lord, thank you. Thank you, Lord. The church is bigger than you, and the church is bigger than me. The body of Christ, it is alive. 
God is not dead. He is still alive. So if you are in Christ, the Bible said that we are lively stones. We are not dead. In other words, anything that is dead can not feel pain. But we are alive in Christ and we feel it when we fail. We feel it when we sin. When I was not a child of God, I didn't feel nothing. When I cursed somebody out, or stole from them, did my dirt. Amen, somebody. Somebody would say amen. amen. I didn't feel a thing. When I was drug trafficking, I did not feel a thing. I had no conscience of sin because I was in sin. It did not bother me to steal from the government. Uh, in the military, I worked in what was known as the motor pool. And for some reason, they put me in charge of the gas. And for another reason, I never gave out a gas. <laughs> All the gas that went in my automobile was from the military. It did not bother me because I was dead in sin. Now, it bothers me when I have the opportunity to run something by the scanner at the grocery store. It bothers me to run stuff by the scanner and it don't get it. I just can't put it in the bag. Y'all talk to me for a minute. Uh, there was a time when I went out the way to find out where my relatives was working in grocery stores because they was gonna scan one and drop two. It did not bother me because I was dead in sin. But now that we are alive in Christ, when we do wrong, we feel it. Tell somebody, say, when you feel it, that means you're alive. Because dead men don't feel no pain. The body of Christ would not be a body without all of you. Sometimes in the body, or as a fact in the body, that there are different cells that perform different functions. Amen. There's a cell that's designed just for the fingernail. Right. Yeah. That when you lose a fingernail or when you clip yours, there's a cell that's designed to make sure that fingernail grow back. There's a cell that's designed just to help your hair. Right. And your hair will keep growing back until you get some dead spots like Brother Handy. Right. But there's a special cell for every part of the body. There's a cell for the pancreas. Right. There's a cell for the kidney. I could go on and on. And all of these cells have different functions. But say this with me, say, but it's in the body. But it's in the body. And whatever is in your natural body, you better believe the body needs it. Amen. It amazes me that even now today that scientists are learning the functions of certain glands in the body that they have not been able to pinpoint what that particular gland or what that particular organ may do. They are still learning about the natural body, what everything that's in the body is for. And in the body of Christ, there are some who still trying to find out where do you fit in. You don't feel like you're a member of the church. You don't feel as if though you have a significant role. 
But whatever role you play, when you become a member of the church, you become significant. You become somebody of importance. And we need everybody in the body of this church, in the body of Christ. God has a designated spot for you, just like the puzzles for the three-year-olds. God has a place for you. You may can't see the full picture, but you did not cut out the puzzle. You did not make it. But God knows where you belong. With all these different cells in the body, even though they don't do the same thing, the administrative department is not the usher board. The usher board is not the mother board. The mother board is not the choir. Every cell in the body has one thing in common, even though they are de doing different functions. Every cell has the same DNA. Every cell in your body, regardless of what it does, will identify you. In the body of Christ, yes, sir. we have different functions in, uh -huh. and we have different positions. Yes. But when you become a child of God, yes. look at somebody and say, we have the same DNA. Yes. Same. We don't have the same personalities. That's good. Thank Lord. We don't have the same abilities. Brother Cain is gifted with the gifts of helps and others and Amen. have the gifts of help. Some are gifted with the gift of love and we don't have the same gifts. Amen. And you can't flow where I flow and I can't flow where you flow. But we have the same DNA. We are born again. Believers in Jesus Christ. And we got to be very careful because you don't want to do too much complaining about your own body. Oh, Y'all yes, talk to me just for a few minutes. Because when somebody begin to claim, uh, uh, complaining about your body, you're going to set them straight. Don't you worry about it. Somebody love all of this. I ain't calling no names. In other words, you going to protect your body. And, and I talk about certain people to certain people just to make them say something about what I'm saying. Don't be talking about him. Don't you be talking about her. Wait a minute now. They made me back it up. Let me talk about my wife now. Let me talk about my husband. But I be just testing and teasing to see how they're going to respond when I talk about that person, they said they love and them and you know what I'm saying. But in the body of Christ, you can talk about who you want to talk about. And very few times we come into defense and defend those like we should. One of the scriptures she read that if one member in the body suffer, then we all suffer. You, you cannot hurt anybody in the church and it don't hurt me. Amen. And when you recognize that you are part of the body of Christ, you don't look to see the downfall of others. But you pray for them that they may be healed. You, you can't stump your toe and say, Put, you got just what you deserve because you shouldn't have been walking without shoes on. <laughs> your, your care for the body will tell you even though, I don't know how many of you uh, stump your toe as a child, but it was a regular with us coming up. We didn't always have shoes uh, to wear and we was barefooted kids. That was before they made the song out the dance barefoot. We was barefoot before the song. And uh and and it crippled the entire body. When you are not 
where you should be and doing what you should do, oh, yes. it hurts the entire body yes. of Christ. Yes. And we have complaining parts. Yes. In the natural body, as Paul began to give the illustration, as he began the illustration about how it says that the, let me find it so I can read it like he says it. But if the foot shall say, because I am not of the hand, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear shall say, because I am not the eye, am I not of the body? Is it therefore not of the body? The whole body were the eyes, and if the whole body were the hearing, then where would the smelling be? And your body, your individual body, have learned to accept its limitations. Uh, That's good. The foot may say, I get no honor. I get no recognition. I'm shut up all day in leather. And it stinks in here. But the hand is everywhere. And the hand is saying, you don't understand. I'm overworked. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I have to pick up? Work it, work Come it. On now, up. Up. Do you know how much I had to write on that essay or that Ooh, dissertation? <laughs> and you think you want to be me? Come on now. Talk, talk, Bishop. And, and the hand said, I have to change baby diapers. Ooh. And the nose said, but you ain't doing nothing because I got to smell it. But they all recognize the fact that we got to work together in order for the body to go forward. Somebody say amen. I have always accepted the fact that where I am in Christ is where God wants me to be at that time. And if he repositioned me, it's because he wants to reposition me. But I've learned how to be content. And some people are not content unless they're being promoted. They're not content unless they are recognized. They're not content unless their name is called. How many times you, know, you put that ring on your finger and you said, look. But you ain't trying to show them bunions. You, you ain't trying to show. I'm just kind of being humorous. You ain't trying to display ashy knees. What I'm trying to say is that we think that there are certain positions in, in the church that's more glorified than others. David said, I'd rather be a doorkeeper. If I could just be a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord. In other words, he said, I'd be content. I will be happy with that job. Many of us, we have jobs, whether it be teachers or whatever the case may be, we get burnt out and we get tired. And we wonder why I ever go into this field. And sometimes you can feel that way as a child of God. Why did God call me to be the eyes? Why did God call me to be the feet? Why did God, I wish that he would have called me to be something else. But the scripture said, the scripture said, one of the scriptures that we read said, I'm going to try to find it. About how God has given everything in the body as it pleased him. Which which one is that? First Corinthians 12 and 18. 12 and 18 said, But now have God set the members, every one of them, in the body as it has pleased him. Yeah. If you knew your family said, God put you where you are. God put you, where you, you may are. not like where you are. You may not like where you are. But wherever you are, that's where God started you out at. I'm picking on my kids today. <laughs> the slow ones and the quick ones. 
My daughter Marcy started. She needed a job out of college. She couldn't find anything in her degree. And I encourage her to go to 911 as a radio dispatcher. And she went there. Oh, we had a lot of days we talked about it. This is not what I went to school for. I can't do this job. I can't deal with these people. You know. I mean, it was some complaining going on. But I encourage her to stay. God is going to open up doors. Now, she is over all of 911. So, if she would have gave up as a dispatcher, it would have cut off the plan that God had for her. All I'm trying to say is that you got to learn how to be all right. Tell somebody, just be all right already. Amen. Just be all right. And she finally accepted it, became content, and God began to elevate. Yeah. See, God don't elevate gripers and complainers, tail bearers and hell raisers and gossipers. Now the devil will promote you. But God ain't trying to promote that. In the Old Testament, Korah and his band, God had the whole earth to swallow them whole. Even though they were kinfolk to Moses, they were cousins, I believe. God just don't promote mess. The devil promote mess and messy people. And he will put them in the midst of God's people to try to distract them with their mess. Just kind of comically, just look at somebody and say, I'm not going to let your mess stop me. Or you were looking at the wrong person, I can tell. God is pleased. When you are complaining about your trials or tribulation, you are complaining about your lack financially, you are complaining about your clothes, some of that we can do something about. We don't know how to be thankful for being a part of the body of Christ. And I love that scripture where it says there's two things that never satisfy. One is a drunk man and another one is an alcoholic. They both want more. Right. Paul said all things be content. Yes. Yes. You are in the body of Christ. You got your ticket for everlasting life. Stop complaining and start being what God has called you to be. Are y'all with me today? Another thing I found about the body of Christ, there is not enough appreciation. I appreciate you. I can't say it enough. I appreciate my wife. Can't say it enough. There's not enough appreciation for the ones that clean the church. There's not enough appreciation. We feel as if though that's their job. Well, it's your job Amen. to encourage Amen. and appreciate. Amen. Just look at somebody and say, I appreciate you. I appreciate now look at somebody else. See, 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 we're gonna find out who's jealous around here. Look at somebody else that's not your significant other. Say, I appreciate you. Why you appreciate them? What they did for you. No. What they've done for me is what they're doing in the body of Christ yeah. that is necessary. Amen. You didn't have to come out here. Amen. The way allergies are today, and several on the praise and worship team are hurting, can't hardly talk, trying to sing you a light or low. Tell the praise team, we appreciate you. We appreciate you. <laughs> 
musicians and my good friend Cap Anderson and the mothers, the drummers, and the keyboarders. Tell them, say, we appreciate you. But if you go to a party, it ain't no party, it's just a gathering of folk eating. But the party started when the music started. And the music started, let us know that we're in a place where we can praise the Lord. There's not enough appreciation. We spend too much time finding what's wrong. Listen, if you find out what's wrong with your body and you don't do nothing about it, then guess what? It ain't going to change unless you start doing the things to make the necessary changes. And, and one of the things about your body, it will let you know what you need to go to the doctor for. It will translate the pain from your foot to your nervous system. And again, in your brain, you got to do something about it. It will cause you to act. If I'm doing something that bothers you, you need to let me know. If any have an alt with your brother or your sister, go to them. Don't figure, don't figure where well, they know. Where well, did you tell them? No, I ain't got to tell them. They know. Well, did you tell them? No, I ain't tell them. And I'm not going to tell them. They know. How do they know? Because they know. We got to learn how to appreciate one another. And we got to learn how to embrace one another. Because when somebody's hurting, sometimes they need an embrace of love. They don't always need the dollar. It ain't always a fruit basket. Amen. Yeah, well, I didn't hear from Bishop. I lost X, Y, and Z. And uh, but Bishop um, didn't hear from you. He lost X, Y, Z, one, two, three, four. But what I am doing, I'm praying for you. Thank you. Whether you lose a loved one or not. Yes. Are you praying for me? Do you have me on your mind? Do you take the time to pray for me? Look at my say, I'm so glad you're praying. I'm so glad you're praying. I'm so glad you're praying for me. We got to learn the importance of praying for one another. And we got to learn how to meet the needs of the entire body, not just certain particulars. Not just certain ones. We got to learn how to give, not just to those who going to give back. Give looking for nothing in return. We, we, we got to learn, amen, what it means to be in the body of Christ. We ain't figured it out yet. Because God said that you are his written epistle. You are his temple. You think that that isolates you. That you ain't got to deal with nobody else. And when you pray for you and your house, that's enough praying. It's time to go to bed. But God wanted to make sure that the body was complete because the Bible said that he gave some first apostles and then I'm not going to go through it. And then teachers and then workers of miracles. He gave pastors. Amen. He gave the gift of healing, the gift of speaking in tongues and interpretation of tongues. God wanted to make sure that the body had everything that it needed. Amen. 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 And to be honest with you. When we get everything that we need and everybody's in the right place, we can do some things on the ground like we desire to do. It's not a matter of how much you give. It's the fact that you gave. Jesus said this particular widow, she gave only one mite, but it was all that she had. And Jesus said she did more than those that was ringing the buckets. Now, I'm not telling you bucket ringers not to ring the bucket. But what I am saying, <laughs> you're only doing based upon how God has blessed you. Amen. If God has blessed you, ask somebody, has God blessed you to rain the bucket? Yes, 
Don't answer, don't answer, just ask the question. The Bible tells us in 1 Peter 2 and 7, unto you therefore which believe he is precious, but to them which be disobedient, the stone which the builder disallowed, the same is made head of the corner, of the head cornerstone. Ephesians said, 4 and 16 said, for whom the whole body is fitly joined together and compact by that which every joint, every person or every joint supplies according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, make it increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. So when everybody do what they supposed to do, God is pleased. Yeah. You remember the story of Achan? He did not do what God had told him to do, what God had led Moses to tell him to do. Don't take nothing. But he took some gold. He took some garments. And he calls the whole camp. He calls thousands to die because he went against what God had told them not to do. And when Moses God revealed to him who it was. They destroyed him, his wife, his children, and everything that he had was destroyed. Listen, we got to learn how to be unified. That's right. We got to learn how to say, have the same mind yeah. and how to be on the same accord. Yeah. 1227 of 1 Corinthians said, Now you are the body in Christ and members in particular. There is a particular place that God wants you to be and stay there until he moves you. Stay there until he moves you. This is the best place I can be is in the body of Christ. I've been a part of a game before. You're going to get hurt. They're going to turn on you sooner or later. In the game, your best friend may end up killing you. I'd rather be in the body of Christ. I'd rather be among friends and foes in church. Everybody in church have not made it to that point where they have the love of Jesus. There are a lot of people that are struggling with your attitude and personality. There are a lot of people who are trying to figure you out. They haven't quite figured you out yet. Yeah. Don't worry about trying to figure me out. Yeah. Figure out what you're supposed to be doing right. in the body of Christ. Yeah. I can hear, let me see what they're doing. Let me see what they're going to do. Let me see. You need to be more concerned about your role yeah. in the body of Christ. Because yeah. we are one. Amen. We are one in the spirit. Yes. Guess what? I got, I got some surprising news for you. The same God that died for me. Right. Amen. He died for you. Amen. Smile and say Hallelujah. hallelujah. And I'm so glad to know that I am in a body that's not going to remain on the earth forever. Yes. The whole body of Christ is going to be caught up. Oh, I'm getting kind of happy right now. I ain't, I ain't moving, but I feel it. Peter said that Jesus the stone which was disallowed has become the head of the cornerstone. And in building that I've had some experience with, you can't build a house. You got to start in the corner. You start with one brick or one block on the concrete. And everything is connected 
to that entire building because of one stone. We are connected to the building of Christ because of one stone. The world didn't want it. Oh God, help me today. The world crucified him. They say he's not our king. But the stone that the world rejected. Look at somebody say he is my cornerstone. I want to say this in closing. That was a story, and this is a true story. That a man was working on a church. They was building a church. And there was a mason out there. He had a stone in his hand. And he was chipping it. He was chipping away on it. And somebody that was nosy was looking at him chipping his stone. And looking at the building. And they were saying, that I don't see where that stone gonna go. And the man was still chipping on the stone. And they trying to figure out, what is he doing? And they finally asked the man, said, sir, what are you gonna do with that stone you keep whittling down, and chipping away? The man pointed, he said, you see way up there at the temple? There's a spot there that I got to get this stone down to the size we can fit in that little bitty crack. God is trying to put you in the right place. Let me tell you something. This is the right church. But we just ain't got you in the right place yet. Yeah. There is a place yeah. you. for you. Yeah. And when we start appreciating one another and loving one another and caring for one another and being concerned about one another from our heart, then you will find out, hey amen, there is a difference in the body of Christ than there is being in the world. The Bible will tell you next that they had all things coming. And there was not anybody that needed anything. Well, there was not somebody making sure that the need was met. And we got the deacons, amen, to meet the needs of the Phoenician women and to make sure that what that was done for one was done for all. Everybody can't be a deacon. Everybody can't be a minister. Everybody can't be a missionary. A missionary. But God got something for you. You're somewhere on the building. A spot waiting to be filled. And you may, you may be in the right spot. But I'm visualizing we got to put some mortar around you uh -oh. to lock you in. Too many people moving around. Too many people want to go from one side of the church to the other. Come on now. Say yeah. We got to have an attitude, Minister White, like, like Paul had by the grace of God. I am that I am. You didn't make me. You didn't shake me. You didn't call me up. You can't take me down by the grace of God. I am. Took him a long time to find that. He wanted to preach to the Jews. But that ain't where God had him fitting in. So God let him go ahead on to play with the Jews and they kept trying to kill him and, and he kept trying to do this and do this and talk to his brethren. My prayer for Israel that they might be saved. They have a zeal of God and this, but not according to knowledge. But Paul recognized that is not my calling. That's right. 
I speak all these different languages. Yeah, 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 I'm a Roman citizen. I can do more work and get where God called me to be working with the Gentiles. But even when he was on his assignment, he did not say he didn't need the other 12 or the other 11. He joined with them and they gave him the right hand of fellowship and accepted his work. Yeah. Whatever your work is, y'all ought to know me by now. You tell me you got to work, I'm going to accept it. Okay. I'm going to find somewhere to make sure you do what you said you want to do. Yeah. I'm going to give you the opportunity to fail. Okay. I'm going to make sure you got what you need to succeed. All I'm trying to say today in all of this talking is that we need one another. I, uh, I can't stand to see my girls because you know sisters, they're going to go in every now and then arguing and fussing and with one another. Somebody say amen. You got a sister. And I tell them all the time, I say, y'all sisters, what's the problem? Y'all know how sisters go. I ain't got to talk about this too long. I ain't studying her. She ain't studying me. She may not never. I ain't gonna never. Y'all know how sisters go. And I stay out of it because they are family. And I don't try to get in too deep. Because I can't take sides. Because I love them all. Thank you, D. Just my, you are important to me. We don't always get along. We don't always see eye to eye, but. You are important to me. I need you. You need me. We're all a part of God by me. Stand with me. Believe me. We're all a part of God. It is real. It is real. Every day. Point at somebody. You are important to me. I need you.
going to help me. Yeah. And you loving me is going to help you. Forgiving you is going to help me. And you forgiving me is going to help. Oh God. Can you feel it? Can we do better? Can we love harder? Can we go in a little deeper? Can we check on one another? Can we pray for one another? Can you take care of this body of Christ? This body, this natural body, is your responsibility to wash it. The spiritual body of Christ, it's your responsibility to make sure that the needs of men. It's not my responsibility all by myself. It's not your responsibility all by yourself. It's our responsibility. Look at my say, it's our. Responsibility. A charge to keep our hell and a God to glorify is my responsibility. We thank you, Jesus. I thank you, God, for your word today. How you sent the shade and the cool breeze. That you sent someone out to hear the word. To receive the word be blessed by the word how you bless me God on today to deliver your word I feel better recognizing this is your body and we just a part of it and we thank you right now God hallelujah say it. Thank you. I could have owed you so many times. Thank you. Would have been in jail if it wasn't for the plan that you had for me. Oh, I thank you, Lord. Say, I Lord, for what you've done for me, how you loose my shackles and you set me free, how you made a way out of the no way, turn the darkness into day, how you, in the millions of sorrow, how you, hope for my tomorrow, each is the time of sorrow, I want to thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, for what you've done, how you set me free, how you made a way out of the no way, turn the darkness into day, how you, in the joy in the time of sorrow, how you, hope for my Give God a praise. Our Dicey's mother, first lady, is coming at this time with an announcement. 
Thank the Lord. Let's give her a hand as she comes. Thank you, Jesus. We do honor the Lord today for his presence. For this is the day that the Lord has made, and I shall rejoice and be glad in it. I'm happy about Jesus. I don't know about you on today, but he is my everything. I stand to give an announcement for all the mothers uh, for next Sunday on Mother's Day. I like to say to you that prayer still works. Second Chronicles 7 and 14. This is the season, season of vigilance. Mother's Day Hallelujah Reception. Sunday, May the 9th, 2021. Immediately after Sunday worship service at here at the Greater New Hope, 1126 Carl Vincent Parkway, hosted by yours truly, your diocese mother. Prayer still works. Please attend. God bless you and be encouraged. And the word of God was preached on today by our bishop. So let us remember that we need one another. We have to hold the rope for one another. I love you and there's nothing that you can do about it. God bless you on this week. Let's tell the Lord thank you again. Amen. If the Lord allow, we're praying for a beautiful uh, Mother's Day. Uh, our first lady will be preaching next Sunday. I get a chance to sit in the amen corner. Amen. And give her the support that's needed. Amen. Because she loves the word of God. She is a praying woman. I mean, she's a praying woman. I ain't shame to say she prayed more than me. She bless everything she eats. She get one great one of Lord, I think I said, hey! It's just a great. She gonna bless it before she take it down. And she catch me at the table tonight. Did you say you're great? She is a praying woman. Amen. The prayer changes thing. And we're going to have some special little refreshment for the mothers. Is that right? We're going to have something special set up for the mothers. Amen. So let's pray that God give us uh, a, a good uh, dry day, a cool day. Amen. And I thank you for coming out. Amen. We're going to get together uh, soon and very soon. We're going to see the king. Uh, those, those that are, are praying for the Whittacy family, amen, because of the loss of his nephew, his sister's son, who was also his church musician. And so that's a great hurt, the family. And all families have gone through so much hurt in this last year, amen. And, 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 and for many, it came over into this year. So we got to pray for one another and be there for one another. And let, let's let this be our last time saying, I started to call you. Amen. Just do it. Just do it. Just call somebody. And you ain't got to have a conversation. Just say, I just want to call and tell you I love you. Need you by. You know, make it short, sweet. Don't dig. Tell somebody, he said, don't dig. <laughs> make it short and sweet. And we're looking to get together. A little bit of an old song. When all God's children get to hell. Oh, what a time. What, what a time. time. What a time. I'm going to sit down on the bank, on the bank of the river. Of the river. What, what a time. time. What a time. What a time. I'm looking forward. When all God's children get to heaven, what a time, what a time, what a time, what a time. I don't know about you, I'm going to sit down on the bank of the river, what a time, 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 oh yeah, bro, hand it. Okay, Brother Henry, we have some trying to give tight and offering if you, where you at? Those that need to give, please. See, Brother Henry, uh, one of the deacons, if he's too far away from you, just give it to one of the deacons of trustees. Deacon Sanders, where you at, Deacon? Behind me. Okay, Deacon Sanders over there. 
for the time. You got to speak. You got to treat the church like Motel Six. Keep the lights on. <laughs> oh yeah. What a time. What a time. What a time. We're gonna sit down on the banks of the river. We're gonna have a good time. 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 Good time. Have a good time. Lay down on my good time. Have a good time. We're gonna have a good time. Good time. Have a good time. Good time. Have a 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 good time. No more grieving day. We're gonna have a good time. 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 Tell me, tell me, me. Go to church if you need a church home. If you have not accepted Jesus, how many just need a renewing in your mind and in your spirit? You just need to be stirred up a little bit. Touch right now in the name of Jesus. Do your Holy Ghost stirring, God. Hallelujah. Remind them of who you are, where you brought them from, and where you got a you got a place to take them. Save to the utmost. Deliver in the name of Jesus. Set free the captive. Oh, God, I praise you. Thank you for your joy. Thank you for your peace. Thank you for your long suffering. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for your tender mercies. I praise you, God, because you've already worked it out. You worked it out for me. You worked it out for every one of us. And we tell you thank you. In Jesus' name. Make us see yourself this best is in the hands of the musician. Good time. Good time. Have a 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 good time. Have